this is the new Renault Colios and just to put things in perspective, the last time Renault launched a car with this name, which was also an SUV, I did seriously consider pulling off to one side of the road and abandoning it when I was driving it home. It was really, really not a good car at all. It was quite, quite staggeringly poor. So the good news is that this is quite the improvement. The bad news is that there are still some significant flaws, which we'll come to in a moment, but basically this is Renault's version of the Nissan X-Trail. Now that's possibly oversimplifying a bit, but essentially under here is the same chassis that you'll find underneath the X-Trail. It uses the same engines, the same four-wheel drive drivetrain. Uh, so it's off to a good start in that respect because this is quite a good two-litre diesel engine and it's actually not bad to drive. Now it's not brilliant, it does roll quite a lot. Uh, it's less than enthusiastic in corners and the steering is completely free of feel and information coming back from the road surface. But on the whole, it actually barrels along very nicely. It's at its absolute best. And I suppose this is very much in a classic French car idiom. When you're doing a long journey, as I'm doing now, and you just want to sit back, relax, let the car take the strain, and this is where the Coleos excels. It's got great seats, it's got reasonable mechanical refinement, reasonably good suppression of wind and road noise, and it just kind of rolls along very pleasantly. There's, there's no great shakes to it, but equally, there's nothing that's going to annoy you, there's nothing that's going to upset you, there's nothing that's going to make your journey a chore. It just slides along very pleasantly. Now, where it starts to go wrong, is actually when you drive it around town and that could be a bit of an issue for Renault because obviously more and more of us live in town and even though we buy these huge SUVs we use them in town a lot and around town the Colios does let itself down a bit mostly because of the ride quality up here on the main road on the motorway it's absolutely fine around town although it's not bad at absorbing bumps the problem is it's incredibly noisy you might hear it now while I'm doing this as we go back and forth across the white line on the motorway and we pick up the the cat size but it just clunks and clatters you hear it actually more than you feel it um, and it's just annoying it just it just sounds unsophisticated and when you're lashing out at minimum 35,000 euro for a basic Colios and a quite chunky 49,000 euro for the one I'm sitting in really you expect a little bit more sophistication than this the other issue is the fact that it's not a seven-seater now the X trail is and obviously the smaller and also quite impressive Renault Catch R SUV is a five-seater. So the theory being this should be a seven-seater, but it's not. And that's primarily because Renault didn't want to take sales away from its seven-seat Grand Scenic. Now I can understand that. There is obviously a bit of delicate marketing and a bit of delicate model balancing to be done when you're trying to introduce multiple models that are all operating in a similar kind of price bracket and family-friendly segment. But really, I think they should have given this seven seats. This should have been a straight down the neck competitor for Peugeot's very impressive 5008 for the Skoda Kodiak uh, for cars of that ilk. In fact, what we have here is a five-seater. It's a very spacious five-seater. There is a huge amount of room in those back seats. There is an absolutely massive boot stuck out the back. And for that, you kind of like it because within its relatively narrow bandwidth, it is enormously practical. It is enormously useful. And if you've only got the two kids, then they are going to have a tremendous amount of room and they're a rather pleasing distance away from the back of your head when you're on a long drive, which is always a good thing. There are a few other problems though. The CVT gearbox actually isn't too bad, but again, around town, it's rather oddly noisy because it lets the engine drone a bit. It also makes this odd kind of whistling noise. You'll hear it when you're driving past something with the window down. It's a very odd noise. It almost sounds like there's a police siren just slightly behind you. Uh, the other issue is this big portrait screen infotainment system, the R-Link system. Now it looks good and it's well specified and it's got decent sat nav and yes it does have Apple CarPlay but it's a bit fiddly. It's a bit awkward to use, the menus are confusing and it does occasionally and for no apparent reason drop the connection to your phone which is a big no-no in the modern day car market. On the upside, overall quality seems pretty decent. There are some cheap plastics here in the cabin, but most of the stuff that you touch, most of the stuff that you look at is really well made. Uh, and again, it's a hugely comfortable, relaxing car to drive, just as a French car should be. 
It's very definitely not a brilliant car, the Collius, not by any stretch of the imagination, but I think it's a lot better than some other reviews have maybe given it credit for. Yes, it really does need to be a seven-seater. Yes, it's a little bit on the expensive side for that matter, but taken within the context of what it does well, which is big, comfy, squishy, cruisy, pleasanty, long-distance, spacious family mover. In that sense, it's actually quite decent. Not a bad car at all. Could have been better, but we'll take it as it is.